Okay, okay. Uh, as you saw on the sign out there, it says Leazare. Uh, that means welcome in the Fra Fra language. Most of the places you'll go, you'll hear a Kwaba, which is welcome in the Akan language tree. But uh, my folks here are from the north of the country, so you'll see a lot more of that. In fact, the, the name Malebna uh, of the restaurant uh, means mother has come back in the northern language, which you'll see my little daughter around here. She's Malebna. So she ended up getting the name Malebna because uh, she missed her grandmother just by a couple of weeks. So it was like, Uma has come back. And so it's Uma Lebna. So these kind of things. But anyway, uh, I'm Jerry Johnson. I came from Los Angeles, although I lived other places growing up, but I spent all of my adult life anyway from 20 or so until I moved here in LA. Um, came to Ghana, well actually I came to Senegal first and some different countries, but uh, I like Ghana because it had, um, well English speaking is one thing of course, and uh, figured I'd have people come, more people come visit that I could relate to, take around and do different things. And plus it's a kind of centrally located for all of this traveling that I still plan to do around Africa. Uh, I've been here 14 years, or 15, since 2004, so yeah, this is 15th year. Um, I spent a lot of time, you know, back in the U.S., going back and forth, so, you know, sometimes it's hard to do it all at one time, but um, so a lot of people start thinking of transitioning, you know, you have to be working out your transition plans, and if you're lucky, you can spend some time here and there, and that kind of thing. But anyway, as far as the... Um, a uh, restaurant, my, my wife is a cook and caterer, and so she wanted a restaurant, so we put it up. But I was, in the meantime, I had been going in and out of a lot of the schools, and I think I said that on the video you had last year, and, um, you know, talking to the children about African history, this type of thing. And so that got to be a little burdensome as far as just trying to get in and out of those places. So I decided to do the wall, that way I could bring them here on field trips and you know, that kind of thing. And that's worked out better because, you know, you have their undivided attention on field trips and, you know, you can discuss more and, you know, and they can come back and follow up and all of that. So that was how it kind of started. And um, then a lot more kind of like adults and people from outside, like, like groups like you started coming through. So it's uh, both, you know, we teach the children as much as we can. And, um, you know, we have a place for the people. I'm um, working on a library back here because what we, in, you'll see the big building down at the end. Maybe when we get to the end of the tour, you, we can go in there. Mm -hmm. We're working on that because we want to bring, you know, mainly a digital library, of course, at this point, but we want to have follow-on material. So like when we talk about these people, then we can go and we can have our study uh, sessions on Saturdays. And then I want to have it so they can just pick a book off, take a reference number, type it in, get the PDF file, put it on their pen drive and leave, you know. Mm -hmm. When the children can start building up their own small independent libraries, that kind of thing. So um, that's, we wanted to kind of be a conscious space, you know. Mm -hmm. You come in, there's always something going on for the mind and for the black mind and for some solidarity and, and ultimately bringing ourselves back to power, which of course is a long run objective here. So that's kind of a little bit of background. Um, you all have a good time in Ghana. I think some of you I know have been to Africa before. But I think the, the things seem to be changing. When I go to the U.S., there seems to be a lot more interest in what's going on here in Africa. Um, and I don't know if that's a phenomenon of, of uh, the big orange the big orange, <laughs> or, whether, or whether that is just the coming to the realization that, um, you know, this, this is, we have options. And anytime, it's just like on the job, you know, if the people on your job know that you got other options, they tend to behave differently whether than they do what they think you're all they got, you know what I mean? And so this is a part of the psychological dynamic that I think is gonna be key, because once we begin to see Africa as an alternative and, and, a, and a, a, a reliable and um, practical alternative, I think it will begin to change the dynamic of, you know, just how we see ourselves and then, 
you see yourselves another way, other people see you another way. So that's another um, thing that I think is positive coming out of this kind of return movement. And Africa is a big place, and so um, you don't have to feel like you got to get trapped in one area. I mean, it's a huge continent, a lot of countries, and uh, at this point, we're still, at least ostensibly, in charge of our own land. I know a lot of you have been seeing, you know, the Chinese are coming very yeah. hard. Yes. I mean, hard, hard. Yes, um, And then the American Euro group of power, they're trying to figure out what to do about that, putting military bases all over the place, maybe to offset this influx of Chinese uh, population. But I've been living here for a while. They don't have no love for you either. Right. So, you know, if you don't build your own power, you're just going from one vassal state to another, That's right. and which is not our objective. That's right. Our objective is to be independent and sovereign. Now, some of you might know Marimba Ani. I think she was, on the, she was on the plane with you all. I don't know if you all recognized her. But she's staying, she's staying here. In fact, her and uh, uh, Sister Ia Kalade are here. They just haven't come up. I think they're sleeping a little late this morning. And so... Um, She's here, and so we'll get a chance, maybe when we break halfway or something, or when we eat, we'll have a chance to talk with her, too, some about, I don't know if the, the book Urugu, yeah. some of you are familiar with, she's the author of Urugu, and Let the Circle Be Unbroken, and some other ones, you know, one of Dr. Clark's uh, protégés. So we have a lot there to talk about today, so we'll try to keep it focused on um, the objective of some unity, some solidarity, some pride in African capacity, and hopefully some plans to uh, pull this thing together. So that's what it's about. Any questions? Yes, I'd like yes, to know. Yes. Are, you, are you a citizen or are you a citizen? I'm not a citizen, but I have the, you know, the, there's paperwork in here and there. You know, I, I tend, I keep being out of the country at the time when they had the thing. I got back when the first 34 got theirs, and so. But I'm, I'm married to a Ghanaian, so in my case, it's really not a lot of, whole lot of difference. You know, I can pretty much do what I want to do, so it's not an urgent thing. But I do intend to, to you know, so if consolidate. You're married, Ghanaian, it's a bit well, it's a little easier. Just you know, I mean, you're married, so you, you're, you know, like your visas, extended visas, that type of thing. You know, but that's. 